We've already discussed um, exponential functions, or at least introduced their graphs. Before we move on to any new topics, though, we want to do a quick review here. Below we have the graph of two functions of the form y equals a to the x power, so two exponential functions, where a has to be greater than 0 and a cannot be equal to 1. On the left, what we have is the case where our value for a is something larger than 1, and on the right we have the case where our value for a is between 0 and 1. That value for a, as we've seen before, impacts whether our function is increasing or decreasing. But let's go ahead and do a quick review of these two graphs just to talk about some of the characteristics of our exponential function. We can see in both cases that the domain of the exponential function will be negative infinity to infinity. The range in either case will be 0 to infinity with that rounded parenthesis at 0 since in both cases we have a horizontal asymptote occurring at y equals 0, meaning our function will approach closer to that line y equals 0 without ever crossing it. When a is something larger than 1, we can see that our function is increasing on negative infinity to infinity, but when a is between 0 and 1, that's when we get a decreasing exponential function. In addition to some of those properties regarding domain and range, we can also talk about how the laws of exponents still apply. We've seen the laws of exponents in previous courses. We've utilized them in this course already. If we have, for instance, something like x to the n times x to the m power, in this case, with that x variable being the same, that means we can combine this into a single expression by adding those two exponents together. So this would be the same thing as x squared times x cubed is equal to x to the fifth power. Similarly with exponential functions, as long as our base is the same, then we can rewrite this as a to the x plus y. So we can combine two exponential expressions in that way. If we had the quotient of two power functions, x to the n over x to the m, we can combine that by taking the difference of those two exponents, and that property will carry over similarly to exponential functions, again as long as those bases are the same. If we have x raised to the nth power and then that quantity raised to the mth power, that's the same thing as x raised to the n times m power. For exponential functions, again that same property applies. This would become a to the x times y power. If we have a quantity x times y raised to the nth power, we can take that exponent and apply it to each factor individually. So we could break that into x to the nth power times y to the nth power. With exponential functions, we can do the same thing, rewriting a times b, that quantity to the xth power, as a to the x times b to the x. x to the negative first power would be the same thing as 1 over x, meaning that a to the negative x power would be the same thing as 1 over a to the x power. So we can use that idea of negative exponents to generate reciprocals of statements.